Today I'm going to take a look at the OSS, now the Huxworks Safety Company, uh, HXQD556 CAN with their flow through technology. Before I do that, um, background, what's my relationship with OSS, now Huxworks, and I'm sorry I'm saying it that way, but I know they probably had to make a name change for some reason, but there could have been better choices than that. OSS was so cool. Like it takes you back to the British Special Forces, um, you know, and Secret Service and whatnot, and Huxworks, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but regardless, they make a cool can. Uh, so I don't have a relationship with them. I bought it uh, at a discount. My dealer discount, I've got my SOT through Sponsor Shop about a year ago and have had some time with it. Um, and I figure I will share my thoughts. So before we get into that, my thoughts, I have a piece of paper so I don't screw up. The MSRP on the Huxworks HXQD556 is 1174, so just under 1200 bucks. Plus your tax stamp, you're gonna be at 1400 bucks for this if you're paying MSRP. I don't think very many people do. Um, it is a stainless sleeve with a titanium core. We'll talk about that. And it weighs 17.3 ounces, but some places it says 17.6. So I'm not sure. I actually can't take it off. I'll talk about that to weigh it, so I don't know. Uh, and it, it they claim it um, registers 40 decibels about at the shooter's ear on a 10 and a half inch gun, which I've got here uh, using M193. I don't have the ability to test that go accurately go to pew science they have done all the tests on this specific can if you want to find out about sound readings it is full auto capable um, and it has a lifetime warranty but they do recommend cleaning it at 2500 rounds we'll talk about that as well so why did i get this specific suppressor well i got this gun this is a type a uh, cqbr block 2 with the superlative arms adjustable gas block this is my go-to gun right now but i got it a year ago it's a 10 and a half inch barrel and I wanted to try this suppressor with the flow through technology because if you're familiar with 10 and a half inch guns and suppressors in general, 10 and a half inch guns have a lot of uh, kind of violent back pressure that has caused some issues with bolt wear and tear um, and just parts degradation over time. So the adjustable gas block helps with that. But when you add a suppressor, you're adding in pressure again into the system. So I wanted as little back pressure as possible and as little gas and OSS, now Huxworks, claim to have a solution to that. So first off, uh, let's talk about the positives of this suppressor on this setup. Gas blowback, um, is it less? Definitely. It is much, much less. Um, I have not had to adjust the gas system or have really been able to. I mean, I guess I could get up in here, um, but I've not had to do that, and I'm about 4,000 rounds into it. I took this gun to a two-day course uh, with um, Bob Keller, and that was 1,500 to 2,000 rounds. Didn't clean the gun, had no issues running the entire course where uh, using a Sandman S, you know, similar round counts, you do have to clean your, your DI guns because it is a very gassy can with a lot of back pressure. So I would say this flow through design definitely decreases back pressure. The ejection pattern has been very, very consistent for the entire life of this gun with this can on it. People use the ejection pattern to say if a gun is overgassed or undergassed. Super consistent um, and it doesn't get as dirty. So. I would say the flow through definitely uh, works as advertised. Very, very happy about that. Next positive is the point of aim or point of impact shift. So they claim that this flow through design, since it's not creating extra pressure as the round's going through, will decrease point of impact shift shooting suppressed, unsuppressed. Um, I zeroed the gun without the can. I haven't had to re-zero it. It's zeroed at 50 yards. I don't have any issues making hits out to 300 yards uh, on 12 inch steel. There we go. You hear how long that took? Yes. Three out of three. Four to four. I can't really measure you know, the actual point of impact shift shooting suppressed or non-suppressed because the can is carbon locked onto this gun. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So point of impact shift, negligible. I'd put that in the positive category. Neutral, 
um, I would say the use of titanium and the weight savings. So they claim it's 17.3 ounces. Some places it says 17.6. Either way, um, that's not like a super duper lightweight can. If you look at uh, the Sandman S, which is a little bit, it feels chunkier, but it's only 17.7 ounces. So it's not much heavier. Um, but you get the Stellite baffles. So I believe the use of titanium is for weight savings, but not weight savings over other cans, but weight savings to what this would actually weigh if they had to use stainless steel or Stellite. It's probably a very intricate inner core um, that has a lot of material, so they had to use titanium. But using titanium, they still say it's full auto rated, so you know it's probably thick titanium, um, and they, they don't have any issues with army tests um, if that's the kind of thing that matters to you. So now let's get into the trade-offs. I'm not gonna call them negatives, I'm gonna call them trade-offs because to get this lower gas back pressure, lower gas in your face, flow through design, you're gonna have to make some sacrifices. Uh, and one of them is sound suppression. This is not a quiet can and it does not sound great. Go to Pew Science, he'll show you like all the, the comparisons, but it's a pretty loud can. It's not gonna be the nicest sound, but the trade-off for the gas, it's okay by me. So it's not something that I would ever shoot uh, without hearing protection. Even though they claim it's hearing safe, um, I just like to be able to hear. Another trade-off, um, and I don't wanna say really it's a trade-off, but it's a QD, okay? So they claim that this suppressor can be taken on and off with your hands. Um, now what happens is the gas, as it's going out, it's gonna be twisting. Well, it's a lefty tighty righty loosey qd so you actually would twist the can on in an opposite direction than you normally would think to and that's going to make sure that the gas is not actually you know taking your uh your muzzle device off as time goes on but it's supposed to lock it on there and i'll tell you right now it locks it on there good so after the first couple hundred rounds this sucker got hot and it carbon locked on there i haven't been able to take it off hence it's got paint on it because I just didn't care. I figured I'd paint it, whatever. I can't get the can off anyway. So I'm in it for like roughly 4,000 rounds and I haven't taken it off to clean it, which is another trade-off using titanium. They say you need to service it by cleaning it every 2,500 rounds to maintain long-term life. I'm gonna have to do it at some point. I'm gonna get like an oil can removal tool and uh, put this thing in a vising and, and get it off. But you know, it hasn't had any issues so far. So it's just living on there, uh, all fat, dirty, and happy. And the last trade-off I'd say is heat mitigation. And I'm not gonna say it's a trade-off, but they claim that it stays cooler than other suppressors. Um, I don't know, the thing gets damn hot uh, right after I painted it. And I know, you know, painting, it's gonna smoke, it's gonna stink, but yes, it smoked and it stunk right after I, I spray painted it the first time. It's Yeah, she got warm. It's actually been painted a couple times and I haven't noticed it in different conditions, smoking and stinking, but I will say that heat wise, um, you know, after a few mags at a pretty good rate of fire, I am getting a, a good mirage off of it. I can't see the target anymore. <laughs> There's so much heat coming off the can. So with a red dot magnifier, shots out to 300 yards, do get difficult when this thing heats up because it is putting a lot of heat and a good heat mirage out there. So a suppressor cover would probably be a better option than spray painting it uh, the way I have done. So overall, what I recommend this can, yes, if you are running a 10.5, 11.5, 12.5 5 DI gun. If you're running a piston gun, no, I would go with something like a Sandman S, um, there's an, uh, an AEM5, AEM5 clone can I'm gonna talk about that sounds really good, has really good sound suppression um, and flash suppression too, which I didn't talk about, but I will in a second. So shorter guns, the lack of the back pressure, definitely a positive. Longer guns where the back pressure isn't as much of an issue, it's still an issue, but not as much, I would go somewhere else than an OSS. I mean, like, you know, 14.5, you could still do it, Beyond that, I would probably move to something that's gonna be a lot quieter, unless you're just like, I don't want any gas in my face whatsoever. A longer gun with this is gonna you know, definitely decrease the gas. I didn't talk about flash suppression because I haven't shot it at night night. I've shot it indoors in low light. The flash hydrogen caps seem to work pretty well. 
um, go look at Aaron Cowan's video. So he'll show you how little it flashes at night. So it definitely does not have a, a big flash signature, but I can't talk about that from experience. It's through uh, third parties, but I trust Aaron and what he says. So overall, good can. Um, definitely on the must-buy list for shorter guns, longer guns. Get something else.